Hello, good day children. I am your English teacher Vanessa Honey Thomas. Hope you are safe and healthy and ready for your second English literature lesson for class 8. And that is a poem. And the name of the poem is more about people. I hope you will enjoy the lesson and concentrate it carefully because at the last you will get the home task. So let's start. The poem More About People is written by Frederick Ogden Nash, born on August 19, 1902, was an American poet well known for his light verse. Died on May 19, 1971 at the age of 69. He was declared the country's best known producer of humorous poetry. I want you to look at the following pictures. What comes in your mind? If you have guessed different negative emotions, so you have guessed correctly. Different negative emotions such as anger, upset, irritated and tired. All the negative emotions arise when someone annoys or irritates you. In this poem, more about people, Ogden Nash went out his anger on some people in the society who are quite annoying and irritating. The poem is written in a simple way and quite comprehensive. In this poem, more about people, we will find some new words. These are number one, annoy, number two, employ, number three, leisure, number four, incurse, number five, displeasure, number six, irking, number seven, firestone and fought, Number 8, Sakam. Number 9, Strafe. Number 10, Nasty. Number 11, Quirk. Let's look at the meanings of these words also. Here is the list of meanings. Number 1, Annoy. Means to make someone a little anger. Number 2, Employ means to do some work. Number three, leisure, means free time. Number four, incurse, mean unpleasant behavior. Number five, displeasure, means a feeling of irritation. Number six, irking, mean irritating. Number seven, firestone and fought, mean large American companies. Number eight, Sakam, mean to give up. Number nine, stray, mean cause of cause to suffer. Number ten, nasty, mean behave in an unpleasant way. Number eleven, quirk, a strange way of behaving. Now we are ready to start reading the poem More About People on page number 22. When people aren't asking questions, they are making suggestions. And when they are not doing one of those, they are either looking over your shoulder or stepping on your toes. And then, as if that were not enough to annoy you, they ploy you, anybody at leisure, and curse everybody's displeasure. It seems to be very irking to people at work to see other people not working. So they tell that work is wonderful medicine. Just look at Firestone and Ford and Edison and they lecture you till they are out of breath or something and then if you don't succumb 
they stray view to death or something, all of which results is a nasty quirk that if you don't want to work, you have to work to earn enough money so that you won't have to work. Now I will give you the explanation of the first answer. When people aren't asking questions, they are making suggestions. And when they are not doing one of those, they are either looking over your shoulder or stepping on your toes. The poet states at the beginning of the poem that when people aren't questions, they are making suggestions, means the people are ignorant why they are asking questions. They still believe that they should be the one give the orders or making suggestions. They will try either to spy into your activities or try to upset you by saying or doing something unpleasant. Stepping on your toes mean interfering in your life by different ways. They love to command you, command your life and they love to give advice. Second stanza and then as if that were not enough to annoy you, they employ you. Anybody at leisure incurs everybody's displeasure. It seems to be very irking. The poet states in the second stanza that when people saw that they haven't done enough to annoy them, they employ you means they will make you to do some work for them. The poet points out people who are not happy to see people enjoying their leisure time means free time. So those people wanted to spoil their mood by passing some comments on them. Third stanza To people at work to see other people not working. So they tell you that work is wonderful medicine. Just look at Firestone and Ford and Edison and they lecture you till they are not out of breath or something. So in the third stanza, the poet state that there are people who always engaged in some work, get irritated, and see other people not working. So they try to convince them to work by saying that work is a wonderful medicine. In order to establish their point, they give examples of multinational companies like Firestone and Ford, and of famous people like Edison, Henry Ford, and Harvey Firestone. They will continue their tiring lecture till they are out of breath. Fourth stanza. And then, if you don't succumb, they stray you to death or something, all of which results in a nasty quirk that if you don't want to work, you have to work to earn enough money so that you won't have to work. The poet states in the last stanza that when people found that you are still alive by their tiring lecture and you don't give up, so they started telling you that if you don't have the wish to work, you will still have to work enough to earn enough money so that you don't have to work. The theme of the poem is if the conduct of different people is not good or respectable towards you but still you have to show patience towards them and believe in yourself to complete your task and goals that you have set in your life. I hope you understood the poem. 
your home task is answer the following questions according question 1 according to the poet in what way are some people annoying question 2 explain the third stanza in your own words question 3 do you agree with the poet's view about other people why or why not question 4 write the central idea of the poem in one sentence in last students do your homework in school copy and submit on Monday at 9 till 11 a.m. in the school office thank you for your attention